Good evening, everybody. We're back in Scotland. We're heading up uh, Glen Elick. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's the one next to where well, you've got Glen Fishy. You've got something fishy that way. And then the Larigaru to the left. So it's the one in between. I think it's something like Glen Eilich. So the plan is we're going to walk a little way into the glen, into the valley. <laughs> in case people wonder what a glen is, I think it's basically like, I think it's basically a valley. So we're going to walk into the valley, the valley of the shadow of doom, and find somewhere to camp, pitch up this evening, and then tomorrow, depending on the weather and everything else, we're going to leave the tents where they are, walk up one side or the other side of the valley, and just see whether there's any snow up, up above. If there's any snow up above. Um, it's not looking too snowy at the moment. In fact, it's not looking, it's not looking snowy at all at the moment. And in fact, it's very mild. I don't know the exact temperature, but it's probably about, probably about six or seven degrees at least. I don't think it's tan, but it's, uh, it's not cold. This is probably about the limit for Paramo. I think if it was very much warmer than this, I think I would be uh, too warm in Paramo. But we're okay, so I'll just show you around here. So obviously we started in Aviemore. Well, that's where we met. And then we've Part the car. Interestingly, the same parking space as a year and a bit ago when I was with Chris and we did the the Larigaru. So I brought with me the Namash 2 again. I thought, well, we're not walking too far. So, I kind of didn't mind loading the pack up and I kind of need the exercise as well. So I wasn't too bothered. So my pack's about 16 and a half kilograms. It's a little bit heavier than, than last time. Uh, I think last time it was about 16, but I put the camera in this time whether I use it or not I don't know but again I knew we weren't walking very far so I thought well it won't matter if I make it a bit heavier but it's certainly a pretty little pretty little blend through here It is forecast to be breezy and I think overnight rain. Tomorrow is supposed to be dry. So, but I think misty or foggy up high. So we'll kind of just see how we, we'll just see what happens tomorrow. Anyway, that's our little introduction. We'll catch up a bit later. Captain Cook has gone, is heading in that direction to see if he can find a camp. And Tony Two Hats, Two Stoves is heading in this direction to see whether I can see a camp. It's a bit boggy. It's a bit on the boggy side there. 
E. So we're looking for a spot to put two E. It's quite breezy. I'll just show you around here. There's some wee hills over there. Ah, little stream thing down there which Lassie has found. Yeah. got to be so careful in some of these places because there's like a little rivulet that runs down there when it gets uh, a little bit warmer and I'll bring Lizzie back out but it's still a bit it's a bit cold at the moment oh. <laughs> How on earth do people find somewhere to camp out here? Ooh. It's just, <laughs> it's just everything. I think they should bring all the, forget all this rewilding business, bring all the sheep back. <laughs> Sheep and deer, some nice grassy patches. How on earth people find places out here? It's just, <laughs> it's just mile upon mile of heather. And quite, quite overgrown too. Look at it, just. Oh. God, find somewhere to camp out here, you lot. <laughs> oh my God. I went looking, Chris went looking. <laughs> we looked and we looked and Chris found one small spot that maybe a solo tent could have gone in. I found a spot that the trail star would almost definitely have gone in. Inconclusive as we were looking at different times as to whether the two spots we were looking at were the same spot or different spots, I'm not sure. But also, I think the bits that we found were down a bit, so probably would have been sheltered just about enough, but they weren't really ideal for the shelters that we've got, certainly not for two people. We've also managed to get a signal, and the original forecast was showing that the winds would ease off a little bit in the night and then pick up tomorrow. But when we uh, got a little bit of a signal, we noticed that the, that the winds are actually picking up overnight. So given that we can't find anything anyway, we're going to be very sensible YouTubers. 
and we're not going to try and pitch on top of a mountain in a hurricane and we're going to retreat back into the forest on the way in Chris did see two two spots so we're kind of aiming for those probably take a few minutes to get there but uh shouldn't be too long because we're kind of entering the forest a bit now but we're on a high road so this road is not the one we came in on we came in on one that was down by the down by the river and this track here will take us down to that track and then uh, we'll just walk along there and find that spot and I suppose the only thing we have to hope is that someone else hasn't nicked it in the in the process of of us uh, wandering around here in no man's land but when you look out there it's just miles and miles of heather and tussocks and what have you it's uh it's not the easiest of places to to find camp up here as I say especially when there's two Chris also said that uh, the last few times when I've been up here with him it's been very very wet so some of the spots that you know maybe would be okay sometimes they're waterlogged now because it's been so wet so like I said we're gonna head down into the forest and shelter down there and then hopefully stay down there and then head up here tomorrow and then I think we're going to plan maybe just to head over that way somewhere and just see how far we go. I don't think we're going to get on the tops because it's looking very windy tomorrow just Aviemore itself is showing like 30 odd miles an hour and that's Aviemore which is where all those lights are over there and you know you can imagine how much windier it would be on the tops you won't be able to walk in it although of course some YouTubers they, they I think they walk in 80 mile an hour wind somehow or other uh, but we haven't had any luck finding something which is it's a bit disappointing it would have been nice to have found something we usually do but not this time so we're going to head back to the woods and hopefully find somewhere there and good evening everybody the time is half past eight i did a meal So I'm going to put some water on to boil and we'll see what it tastes like. I'm just going to use the, the mic in the GoPro for this. And so I'm going to put plenty of water in. Quite a lively, quite a lively little flame that comes off that. Okay, that's that's off. We we came all the way. <laughs> we didn't get us back as far as the car, obviously, but we had to come back quite a long way because we couldn't find any anywhere to to camp out back there but Chris remembered this spot or a spot in the forest not too far off the path so we came all the way back and we we walked past this spot and then we kept walking and we couldn't see anything and then Luckily, we found this spot in the forest and there's a little waterway quite close 
just down here so we were able to get water so we were able to get water there this um reactor stove it's, it is good you know if you just want to boil water and you want to boil water really really quickly um, <laughs> Just be careful when it's brand new. Watch my previous video. You know, brand new gas canister. But it is certainly uh, pretty powerful. Uh, so yeah, we got into camp and it was that. I think we got here. Every time we go out with Chris, we, we always have trouble trying to find I always have trouble trying to find camp. I don't know why. But there's so few places. It's just so much. There's so much heather and such like everywhere. So actually, I don't need to eat. I don't. I can save those veggies for another time, can't I? Because. Uh, um, I've got veggies in here. Look at these little things. You've got a little thing. Oh, I guess. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called finally. I've got haggis. This is haggis. Um, I think turn it. I guess turn it and sweet. I guess turn us turn it and sweet. That's what this is. So I think I've probably overdone the water a bit. So we will leave that for ten minutes or so. It's 25 2 so we probably ought to leave it until 10 2 that's a good 10 minutes and a bit so we'll take a look at it you know about about then but yeah i'll show you around camp uh tomorrow hopefully i remember okay let's have a look at this so you remember the spoon and I brought a second one too, although I put them both in the same place. Okay, all right, but well it's still hot. And, let's see if we can see it, that is my haggis and neeps. No mash. I didn't bring mash. See what it's like. Hmm, that's not bad actually. That's hydrated well. Hmm. That is nice. I put plenty of um, pepper and salt and such like with the uh, neepy things. And that has that has rehydrated really really well hmm I can highly recommend dehydrating haggis and leaps that is nice that really is perfect and it stayed hot too I don't know how much water I put in. It's quite a bit. And it's um it's used nearly all of the water. That is really 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 nice. That's probably this is probably, maybe, arguably, 
the best that I have ever had of any dehydrated meal. And this is my own. So the Expedition Meals one, because they're doing one apparently, that should be nice. It's just perfectly hydrated. Mm. And it's hot too. It's quite spicy. So I put I'm sure I put some I definitely put pepper and salt in. I'll probably put some herbs in. But that is really, really nice. And it's not difficult to do yourself. And in fact, you could probably even do it in your regular oven. You probably don't even need a dehydrator. If you get some racks and cook this stuff, with the neepy things, I basically mashed it so I had like a, like a mash. Once it was boiled and really, really soft, really soft and cooked and I just mashed it and then I just put the paste on the racks and then just built the racks up I have to say it was a bit of a bugger to get it off the racks because it's like because it's a mash not a solid it did kind of fuse into the into the rack so it wasn't the easiest to get off the racks it was it was quite difficult but you know you could poke it with your fingers and it was really difficult it wasn't easy but unbelievably nice And then I bought a haggis and I boiled the haggis so it was cooked and I let it cool off and then I just cut it into small pieces and then dehydrated them. I think it took a few goes because my, I put one of those ninjas, is not very big. So if you used your oven, I, I should use the oven really. I don't know why I don't use the oven, but the, it's like the it's like the ninja's convenient, but the oven is really. I suppose what you could do, you, know, you could put mashed potato in as well. If anything with this pot, it does make a, a very sharp scraping sound. I think, I think, I think that I get some neeps and tomorrow I've got bolognese, homemade bolognese. I reckon they're the two best ones. That haggis and neeps, that was really, really, really good. So I must do it, I w even though that was mine. And I think I've done that before Expedition Foods have got theirs out. I did hear that they were making one, so it's so kind of pinched their idea. But, oh, oh, that was nice. That was nice. That was so nice. Oh, now I'm quite full up. So I think I'm going to put some 
water on <coughs> and have a cup of tea. Tea time. Oh, stretch. Oh, I do like this tent. There's so much room in here. Oh. I do like space. Oh, my knee. My knee's better than it was, but it still it still gives me it still gives me grip <laughs> grip grip gripe gripe whatever the word is anyway that's probably everything for this evening i don't really think there's much else i can show you in camp it's about eight degrees it's not cold i think if i ever do any cold weather camping I should have to take 20 million feathers with me. My uh, my Kirin 4 GT should arrive soon. It's stuck in customs at the moment. We it hasn't even got to the shop yet. So that was that was due that was due at the end of January. That was due at the end of January. And we're halfway through February now. So that should come sometime soon. So when it does arrive, I somehow, I somehow get that down to the heart more. I don't know. I, I get it down there somehow. It's ridiculous. It's even flying. It's so it's so mild. There's even flying bugs around here. I've got one at the back of the tent. And then there's two up here. There's three, or four. It's just <laughs> in the middle of February, we got bugs flying around. It's crazy. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this little wonder, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button to all. Thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching.